are in this project. Uh, so I think it's simple, me and Jatri. It's proud to present you the conceptual prototype of uh, version 1. Uh, it's our photo test uh, prototype to stop the side view. Okay, the L center is a LED and the logo as well. So today I'm going to uh, elaborate more about the product architecture, product planning, and the sales code. So based on the functionality, uh, our product can break down to the five chunks which are the enclosure, page, PD reader, and so forth. This is a modular <coughs> architecture. The reason why we use the modular, uh, modular architecture is because it's easy to manage, outsource, and well-defined the interaction. So uh, using the pie charts, we can define the incidental interaction easily. This is how we define. So summary for the product architecture. Uh, one point I didn't highlight is about the advantage of we use pretty for product. Uh, we use one of the chunks to define a new generation product. Uh, later on, we got more about it. Product planning. Our product will be launched in 2016. Um, we will focus on the... Um, in 2016, the uh, project will be focused on customer feedback and uh, further cost reduction in the manufacturing. So at the end of this year, um, we will a mobile app will be introduced to the market. Uh, so to let the end user have a more free, uh, to have a more freedom to access the data before the seven. So in 2017, uh, project will be focused on R&D, and we have some fancy feature like wireless charging. Uh, in order to show the eco friendly, power saving feature must be there. And in 2018. New factory will be launched in the market. So we uh, we, we follow the market trend. We have a, this new factory introduced uh, to our product. And lastly, uh, the last project, hopefully, it can show the all uh, completeness of our NLG system in all aspects. Summary for the product planning. Um, to emphasize about the new generation product, one of the chunk is about the PD reader. Uh, the new product will be attached to the sanitizer, and another will be the alcohol-based hand wipes. Sales plan, sales goal. We aim for 2.8 million for this two year, 2016 and 17. Primary target will be set in Singapore, and then non existing higher. So this is our new business. Okay, sales plan. We want to have a wrap around program in hospital <coughs> to create the awareness uh, follow up by the government tender. So the assessing the business group tactic is a whole <coughs> integrated event and a trial installation in hospital. So the trial uh, installation will prove how the system effective is and the has experience with the product. The my the pricing strategy will be focused on using the contribution margin based pricing. Right now, I will pa uh, pass the time over to C2. We will talk more about the uh, product development economics. Uh, hi, good evening. I'm C2. I'm CFO of Crosswind <coughs> Technology. Today, I'm going to talk about our development economic, first target costing, uh, GFM, DFE, and our projected uh, cash flow. For our target costing, we, we, we took uh, two of the uh, similar product, similar existing product in the market. We take their, their uh, pricing plans and wind down to these two average numbers. Uh, and we set our targeted price as 300 with profit margin, 140%. So we left with 135 <coughs> this is our initial view one, and with all the costs combined, uh, our, our total cost of the batch is around eighteen dollar, and receiver around twenty three dollar. And there are some highlighted parts here. They are supposed to be environmentally friendly, and we are following all the compliance like uh, lead free, our HS compliance, etc. Uh, this is our initial. Uh, manufacturing cost. 
uh, with the material cost from the previous price combined together with uh, factory cost, labor cost, and software development, it, it becomes 106. Okay. Uh, here we apply the GFM method to reduce the cost. Uh, first, we try to reduce the component cost here. Uh, we try to make our product uh, minimum vi viable. Uh, so we cut down unnecessary features like uh, performance. We, we keep the performance at, uh, at low enough level. So uh, we can reduce some of the things like our processor. And we combine major components so they become cheaper. We can buy from the uh, same supplier, one supplier. And for production costs, uh, obviously, is very expensive in Singapore. We have a factory, and labor cost labor cost is also very expensive. So we decided to go for outsourcing, and from outsourcing, we can reduce much much more much a lot from the component cost also. Uh, uh, like uh, because the factory uh, producing our product uh, at, is at the same place. That produce the components for our product also, like, like uh, Shenzhen in China, and we can easily scale up and down our production rate also. <coughs> uh, for reducing the software development, uh, first initially we, we are trying to uh, outsource the software development, but we use uh, these critical parameters and we weight them and we give them score and. Realize that because development is much more cheaper, much more manageable, and and very uh, easy for us to put in more requirements. Uh, this is our final uh, BOM. Uh, same thing, steel green components, and the price is a little bit more cheaper. Okay, our final uh, manufacturing cost per unit we reduce down to thirty four dollar. From 106, so we are making a lot of money here. Okay. Uh, this is the sensitivity of our whole business uh, <coughs> critical variables. Uh, like obviously, unit price is uh, very high sensitive, uh, and followed by unit sales, uh, production cost, servicing, uh, discount, discount rate is unfortunately high, out of our control. Uh, so we are focusing on these factors. Okay. Uh, this is our base financial model here. With this model, we are making uh, about 1.4 million after six years, and our breakdown period is about two years later on. This is our worst case scenario. In this case, uh, we we change variables for both macro electronic. Uh, sorry. Uh, Microeconomic and microeconomic, we, we try to uh, focus for very best, very worst case, and the break, uh, break even point is shifted to three point five years, and our our NPV for after six years is about five hundred k. This is our best case as well as our company goal. Uh, here we don't play around with the macro electronic values like discount rate, we just play around with the things we can change, uh, the things we can work hard and we can make more money. Uh, so it's much better. After 1.5 years, we are going to break even and we are making about 3.3 million after all. Thanks. Let me pass to Gigi. I'm going to present the intellectual property followed by making investment and marketing plans. First, intellectual property trademark. We have registered trademark for our product name, Intrust Flash, after the product was formed, uh, the edit was formed. The application of uh, trademark is to prevent the uh, unfair competition by protecting the, uh, the, the use of the name of our system, Intrust Flash, and it will take around four to six months for the approval. We then apply copyright for all the materials in the development of our company, the toaster technologies, and our system, our invention, uh, Intrust Flash, including the Server, the software for the server of in-house flash. Next, uh, patent, which is the most important uh, IP. So, uh, as our invention is not a product or a system, so we have applied patent for the concept of how the system works and the design of it. Below, this one is the, the 
This is the uh, concept design of InfraSlash. Mm, based on our business plan, we already applied Hayden in Singapore. So our next target will be Thailand and US. So we'll be, we'll be, we're going to apply to Hayden in uh, next year 2016. So this is the timeline for the IP application and the game chart. So in 2015, we applied trademark, copyright and patent in Singapore. 2016, we're going to apply patent in Thailand and US. And where we can apply all this uh, IP, uh, IP in all these countries? In Singapore, uh, IP office of Singapore. In Thailand, uh, the application can be done in the Department of IP and US, and US patent and trademark office. So uh, next, uh, intellectual property infringement. How do we reduce risk uh, in IP infringement? Uh, we decided, decided to do outsourcing. One of the reasons is that uh, there is less risk uh, in IP infringement as we are not producing ourselves. By outsourcing, actually, we can uh, we have less concern in the in infringing others as well. Uh, IP how do we uh, manage IP infringement? As uh, IP, we need a lot of uh, legal knowledge, so we are not the expert on this. So we can consult all these professional. IP consultancy when we like, encounter all these IP related issues. So marketing plans. Uh, Singapore is our first market where we're going to launch our product in January 2016. Our main target is uh, medical center, healthcare center and hospital. <coughs> so we categorize the targets into primary and secondary targets by the size and popularity of these uh, medical center and hospitals. The population of people on, on, in the areas and the location. Uh, most of our primary targets are located in so this is some of the this is a timeline for some of the marketing events. So uh, we plan to do trade shows uh, in all in all these uh, medical and health related occasions and events. As our product is related to uh, health and medical, so it's the best time for us to show and promote our item to the people and to the world. These are some events like Arab Health Day in January, Health Hygiene Day in May, and International Vision Expo and Conference in September. Next, I'll pass the decision to so thank you for more about your question. Thanks. Thanks, Eric. Uh, so today I'd like to share you about our project management and our, our quality assurance and what's our incorporate failure, sorry, failure creation here. So for project management, we follow our system development life cycles. It's our uh, six phases. So we break it down into a timeline so we can follow that. Uh, so we have planned for two years, 2015, 2016, and a subsequent year, 2017. For our project development, we focus on our first year, 2015, 2016. So this is a detail, but uh, the most important part is uh, now we are at the stage of a prototyping. We will go for manufacturing, quality testing, and we will go for a product launch at January 2016. So uh, 2017, subsequent year will be mostly highlighted on our customer penetration and our improvement feedback from the customers. So this is a project scheduling. Uh, this is a timeline for again chat. It's a, a breakdown of our, our, our product development stages. Uh, here, Cobble Text, uh, for prototyping, we will go for product, uh, product testing at the same time. So we can, after the product is done, it's already quality assurance. So it will be done before product launch, using one six. Um, so when it comes down to product rigs, we identify all the rigs relating to the Resources, cost, time, and uh, environmental. That's the most important part too here. Um, so, so what we do is we identify the factors, then we go through all the necessary parts, and uh, we will uh, discuss about the contingency plans. So, if anything goes wrong, what's our plan B? That's our system. So, if national tender require us to do, we will go for a formal audit as well. So, uh, now I would like to talk about quality assurance to our customers. Since our product is uh, information technology devices and uh, healthcare, so we have to uh, follow the proper standards for the market clearance. So these are the things we break down, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, RF, medical, and uh, so let's break it down. Our product use our functionality test, reliability, and EMC testing. So these are the three aspects for the, our qualification. So most importantly, our firm need to be accredited to ISO 9001 because customer require us to follow that. This is a QMS system, quality management system. So we can offer. Uh, we we're saying that we don't we, we don't just offer great products. We offer the great quality. That's for the assurance. So this is our testing certification timeline. Uh, I'm going to start around 2015 before 
all the sales launch, I will finish. So we got a gold ring light for the market launch. So now I'm gonna go to our values here. What's our value creation? It's our in, it's our in sense of intangible. You can't really touch a value. Well, but in order to make sure that we speak the same language as the clinical people and the finance people and our all our stakeholders, we have to speak the same language. This is the values to give them. So here for the clinical data, we have seen that uh, we have a three days reduction in a hospitalization per minute. So that's the value to the patients. So using the interest flash, three days reduction. Uh, for reimbursement system, that's for finance guys. We're, we're, we're estimating around 600 US per patient. That's a lot of money for them to consider to install our system. So most important, 36% live less in fashion. So this is the values we give to the society from our product. So that's all for the value. And uh, now it's, uh, we're all a simple man, more than ambition. So it's true that we want to be a big player one day. So thank you so much for us to share this opportunity and appreciate we start our head start today. Thank you so much. Okay, questions from the audience. Oops, there has to be at least one question from the audience. It has to be. So if you don't ask, I will volunteer you to ask. And they are the most threatening group because now they will be sitting as audience, okay? <laughs> so you better be careful. Nobody has any questions? How about you, sir? The tallest one in the class. Go ahead, ask them. Uh, 
Nimbin and Jiaoyan, right? And I messed up all the names, <laughs> right? Okay. Okay, sorry. Hongshu. Hongshu. That was for the free <laughs>